And I just want to welcome all of you uh, to tonight's program. Um, thank you. <laughs> no. Wow, you all need to come back like every day. <laughs> now, uh, before we begin the conversation and the book signing with the artist, I want to thank our partner for this program, Harvard University's Hip Hop Archive and Research Institute. Now, do you all know Marcy yet? Okay, well, in particular, I want to thank Marcy Morgan, the executive director of the Hip Hop Archive, for her collaboration on this event. And also, of course, to Bakari and to Eden and everyone else that was a part of this. Marcy is always a pleasure for us to work with here at the ICA, and I'm really looking forward to continuing to find more opportunities to work together now that she's joined the ICA's Board of Advisors. Woohoo! <laughs> now, with that said, let's get started. Um, in a minute, Marcy will be jo uh, joining me here on the stage, but before that, we're gonna watch a very short video. Enjoy yourselves. I can't begin to tell you what a pleasure it is to be here on this incredible night <clears throat> where, as we can see, yes, dreams do come true. One of the things that I want to say very quickly is that when we talk about hip hop, very often what we don't talk about is what I've called the real hip hop, and that's what we're talking about tonight, yes. where creativity and flow means everything, where being able to really put things in a particular perspective in an artful way that brings in all the different layers and levels of art, culture, politics, love, all of that. That's what hip hop flow is, that's what creativity can be about in the hands of a genius. Um, there are many people who uh, helped us get this evening together. Um, and the incredible uh, staff of uh, the ICA. We just can't thank you enough for uh, working with this collaboration. I want to make sure that you understand that this is an evening about hip hop culture, hip hop family, uh, hip hop style, hip hop creativity, and what it means to be involved in something that really is about the brilliance of people who are representing themselves no matter what, in whatever context. We are here. We are here for the love, the culture, the art, the family, the politics, whatever it takes to make this a place that includes all of us. And one person who has taught us that and taught us how it looks and feels in terms of whether it's expressions, beats, syllables, ideas, know the ledge, all those things, I think um, it is important that we pay tribute to those who have taken us where we are and who we've joined and who, who have joined us. One of the things that um, I always love when I hear the uh, song Timeless is when he says, so age don't count in the booth when your flow stays submerged in the fountain of youth. Here we are tonight to celebrate creativity, ideas, rhymes, hip hop. Welcome to Rakim and along with us also Bakari Kidwana um, in this very, very um, beautiful cold winter night that's got warmth everywhere in here. Thank you very much. Peace and love, y'all. How y'all doing? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the, the format.
that is actually going to be a little uh, uh, loose. Maybe toward the last 10 minutes, we'll be able to have questions and comments. We, uh, I know that we're uh, a little tight in terms of the time. Um, but one of the things that I want to say, uh, just in terms of reading through the book and thinking about um, various things that I was doing when I heard you, because when, when I really got into hip hop, I was uh, just beginning to teach as an assistant professor. So I was in, sort of into hip hop, but all of my students were d devout, you know, and, and I had to learn things very quickly, uh, and they taught me a lot. But the one thing that, that I really loved about you in particular was that you got a sense of you come from people, you know? that you would, there's a mother, there's an aunt, there's, you know, music, there's all these things that represent the black community that I knew and understood and loved, no matter what anybody said. So hearing hip hop rise, as it was just rising, it was just beautiful to see, all right, the next generation's doing it. And uh, it's been an, just an amazing contribution. So I think one, one of the things that we and, and Bakari and I uh, talked about was really wanting to see if you could just talk a little bit about that and uh, um, music in your household and uh, your aunt and the influence and, and how that um, shaped you uh, in some way. Well, yes. Um, I was blessed to have um, parents that love music. Um, my mother and my father, they loved music. Music was always playing in the house. Um, my mother, uh, professionally, she sang everything from opera to jazz music and, of course, R&B and everything in between. Um, and hearing the music, everything from, you know, jazz in the house, you know, um, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, um, John Coltrane, at a young age, um, gave me a real deep uh, love and respect for music. And I think a, a deep understanding um, growing up on jazz music. Um, I always felt my mother and father gifted the music to me. So when I started making records, it seemed like I, the, the first people I wanted to please was them. You know what I mean? Uh, once I got in my house and, and, and played music, I knew I wasn't going to play it low. And eventually, moms and pops would hear it. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure they approved first. You know what I mean? Um, definitely wanted that, that uh, cosign uh, from my mother, you know, being uh, the one that passed it down genetically. You know what I mean? And my pops was just a connoisseur. You know what I mean? He knew what it was. And, it, you know, coming up, um, at that young age, you kind of become a fan of your mother and father music first. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, that's why I felt, you know, they gifted it to me. So I wanted to uh, impress them. Um, my aunt, uh, Ruth Brown, she was a, a professional jazz singer. Um, and she used to babysit me when I was young. And um, of course, you know, she was always, you know, in the back of my mind. Um, you know, I wonder what she thinks about this. I wonder, if, you know, if she gonna hear this, if she's gonna listen to this. So, you know, I was writing music. You know, of course, I wanted to please the hip hop culture, but um, I think I wanted to kind of get the blessing from, you know, mom, pops, my aunts, and the household first, knowing that, you know, they had a deep influence on it as well. You know, I don't know. And you were, you were the, you were the youngest, right? Yes. yes. And you know, it's, it's clear. It's funny because before you got here, someone in the audience said, is Stevie Blass here? <laughs> it's my <laughs> and it big made, brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're, in the book, you talk a lot about your, your siblings. And it's clear they had a big influence in terms of shaping you as well. No doubt. Um, my oldest brother, Ronnie, um, he played uh, music, he went to college, and got a degree for music. Um, he had the, the blessing to tour with people like Mighty Sparrow, which was a Calypso band. Um, then he came home one day, he said, um, guess who I'm going on tour with? 
when we was like, um, you know, we started naming Calypso people and, and names like that. He was like, nah, Curtis Blow. Me and my brother looked at each other. We said, Curtis Blow, Curtis Blow, or the Calypso Curtis Blow? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, nah, Curtis Blow, Curtis Blow, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, he, he uh, let us know, you know, what was going on and, um, you know, he, he was able to tour with Curtis Blow. Um, and uh, me and my brother used to wait home for him to come home off tour with the stories, you know what I mean? Um, I think my older brother let us know it was possible, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My mother had it, you know what I mean? She, she had it. Fortunately, we was realizing it was in the genes. Once we seen what my brother can do, he played right. the piano and, you know, he put that right. work in and he was real good. But, you know, me as a little kid, I was like, you know, like that bridged the gap for me right there. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, being from Long Island and most of the, you know, activity with hip hop was going on in the inner city. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, we almost felt like we was on the outside looking in right there 30 minutes away in Long Island. You know what I mean? For some reason. But, um. My brother bridged the gap and made us, you know, think okay. you know, it was possible. And then, and then Stevie yes, played my, the saxophone yeah, and inspired you to play. Yeah, uh, my, the, my middle brother, um, he started playing the sax. And um, I always, you know, crack jokes on him today. I used to say, you know, I still say, you know, I'm glad you was lazy because he never used to put his sax up. He used to just lay it down on, on the case. Mm -hmm. So I wait till he walk out the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Go pick up the sax and try to play what he just played, you know what I mean? And fell in love with the sax and, you know, I started playing the sax, you know, at a young age in school. And, um, you know, um, again, it all came from, you know, that influence and, you know, my mom's being a spark and then, you know, my brother letting us know, yo, it's possible, you know what I mean? And we just tried to, you know, keep the torch lit. Do you have a, you, don't you have a song that your sister's singing? Yeah, um, I got two sisters, Stephanie and Robin, and today's my sister Robin's birthday, which oh, is wow. dope. And, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, I'm, I'm definitely gonna let her know we brought her up today, so you know she's gonna feel good about that. Right up. And um, yeah, my uh, my sisters, um, it came out, and it was a song that I had, and I took it to the studio. I wanted to sample it, but the song was a little too noisy. So I called my brother up. I said, Ronnie, I got this piano song, man. It's perfect for you, man. If you can come to the studio, um, you can play it over for me. I knew he could play anything. So I said, you know, come to the studio. You can play it over. I said, um, I said, where, where Robin and Stephanie at? He was like, I don't know. I guess they home. I said, yo, stop by. Pick them up and bring them with you. You know what I mean? So I picked them up. They came out to the studio, man. Um, my brother played the track over. I sampled it up, um, put the drums on it wrote a hook, and my sister sang it, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, it, it came out kind of dope. It's called Keep the Beat, if you all um, heard, of, heard of that joint on one of my albums. But um, it was dope doing a joint with, with my brothers and sisters yeah. all there, you know what I mean? It kind of, you know, made it all full circle and, and brought the old living room vibe back, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, there are a couple of... Um, I know we've got some time constraints, and I know that there are people who are out, who want to um, ask uh, questions and and say a few things. So we may segue to that. What do you? Mm. Let's talk a little bit. Let's, I might, maybe, ten, maybe 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 ten or fifteen minutes. Let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit. Not so fast. I guess I mean I always have a million questions I want to ask him. Because um, I, I feel like we, we, we scratch the surface on a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and it's always so much, so much more when we start digging deeper. Yeah. One of the questions I kept asking you um, that I couldn't get an answer from you, and then I heard you on a radio interview, and you were just in a flow that day, and you you telling them. I'm like, well, Whoa. damn, why can't we have it in the book? <laughs> what, 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 was that, <laughs> what was that, bro? That was... Yeah. Um, I didn't know, I didn't realize your mom, I kept asking, where's your mom from? You kept saying, well, she was from Brooklyn. Right. And, and, but what I was asking you was, where was she from before she was 
from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> and so you talked about in this interview that uh, your mom's family was from the Caribbean. Yeah, my, yeah. my, my mother's side of family's from the Barbados. Okay. Um, <laughs> The Bayesian in my blood. I got the Bayesian. <laughs> yeah, um, Bayesian mixed with West Indian, man, and Cherokee Indian. Yeah, it's interesting um, because, you know, so much of when we talk about hip hop as a African diasporic culture, right. a lot of times that early wave of hip hop artists, you didn't hear about their Caribbean backgrounds until right. later like later on as we start getting to the 90s people right. would talk about it more right so so you were one of those artists because you didn't really do a lot of interviews anyway right, well, right. <laughs> it people, took me a while it took yeah, me a while they yeah. used to always twist my words you know i guess um um being in islam and some of the things i was saying they would ask me questions and i would try to answer it and they would kind of twist my words up so i kind of held back from a lot of right. interviews early. Right. Oh, yeah. And and your and your creative th this book about creativity. Um I feel like one of the things that we didn't um talk about the last time we we talked was we didn't go as deep into the the influence of the 5% nation on on you as an artist and Dr. Morgan when she was introducing you she talked a lot about you know the the knowledge aspect of hip hop, the resistance of hip hop, the connection of hip hop to the past. And I feel like a lot of your music, um, as we talk about the foundations of hip hop, like you kind of, you did create a, you created a blueprint in terms of rhyming, but you also, because of that 5% influence, created this kind of a basis in, in, in knowledge. So can you talk about that and the fact that you were so young when you, when you, when you got involved in the 5% Nation? Or when you got involved in the teachings? Yeah, um, uh, I think 85. 85. when I got knowledge of self. Mm -hmm. um, I, I felt like as, as things went on, like I felt that that came to me for a reason. You know what I mean? Like, I knowledge of self in 85, and then in 86, um, Eric B knocks at the door. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know what I mean? Like, I started... You know what I mean? Like the way I think, man, I, I kind of, I like to think, you know, everything, you know, is for a reason. You know what I mean? Nothing, you know, I don't like to take nothing for granted. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I thought, like, you know, stars was lining up for me. Right. Um, I got knowledge of self, and um, I was really, at the time, I was really in need of it. You know what I mean? Um as an adolescent man and, and you know, eleven, twelve years old, I was I was kinda wilding out. And um I was looking for, you know, something to ground me, you know, early. I know I needed something to, you know, slow me down. Um before that, uh met somebody in Zulu and thought that, that was that was the answer. Um and then shortly after that um, I met a couple of the guard bodies, but um, getting out yourself, man. Like like I said, I was in need of it, um, and when I when I got it, I just felt that it, it it was it was for me. You know what I mean? I felt I felt like it was what I what, what I was missing in my life. I felt um, I needed that to to guide me and and keep me focused, and. Um, Fell in love with, with, with studying and, and trying to, you know, learn all I could know, man. And I thought I was going to play football, but um, Eric B and a friend, a friend brought Eric B to the house. Eric B knocks on the door. Um, I was kind of almost like, well, you know, he's like, well, you know, I know Molly Maul, I know, I know, um, uh, Mr. Magic, but I was almost like, well, you know, I'm going to play football, man. I said, you know. If you want to make a record, we can make a record. But I'm 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 going to play football. At that point, I was kind of contempt, you know, with with my so-called rap life. You know what I mean? But um, things happen for a reason. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm only about five seven, five eight with, with my Timberlands <laughs> on, buck twenty. <laughs> Quarterbacks, I play quarterback. Quarterbacks is like 6'5", 270 pounds now, so things happen for a reason. So I figured that, you know, everything was lining up for me, man. And um, I just felt that um, 
the lessons and, and the literature that I was reading um, helped me get to where I was. Mm -hmm. um, it was well needed, and it, it, it gave me guidance. It, it, it gave me, um, you know, also like a responsibility. I felt like now I got a responsibility. This is, you know, I got to follow these laws and, and things of that nature. And um, at first I was a little um, apprehensive to put it in my rhymes. I didn't think that, you know, the two um, went together. You know what I mean? Um, but at the same time, I was still rhyming, and it seemed like I would rhyme like I wasn't studying. And uh, one of my brothers, uh, not physical, uh, one, of, one of my friends um, happened to be ODB's cousin, moved out from Brooklyn and Long Island. And one day, uh, his name was Talik. He came up to me, he was like, yo, Ra, why don't you... You know, why don't you ever say your, your your righteous name in your rhymes? Why don't you ever, you know, say, I used to be like, you know, I don't want to, you know, get it twisted, man. You know what I mean? I Like, again, I ain't think to, you know, I had so much respect for, for the lessons. I ain't think it, you know, it was, um, you know, supposed to be in hip hop. I ain't think, you know what I mean? But um, after a couple weeks, he kept coming back. Yo, Rob, right, man, you should at least, you know, say your name. And, but I sat and thought about it and, um, Again, I knew that things was happening, you know, for a reason. So, you know, finally I learned how to slowly incorporate what I was learning into my songs. And, and the way I did that is, you know, not, not, not quoting the lessons, but just my understanding of what I was learning. Right. And just started implementing a little bit slowly, but surely a little bit here and there, here and there. And, um, got comfortable doing it and felt like that's what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, and it was, it was just so impactful. I mean, I, I feel like when I think about even the Nation of Islam and the rise of, of Malcolm X, yeah. when, when somebody is really a, a believer and grounded in, 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 a, in a belief system, it allows for them to kind of articulate a, a, a truth to people. And I feel like the, the lyrics that you were rhyming you know, at that time, which is, it was just so impactful. It just, it just woke so many, so many people up. And it, it, it made hip hop ab about, about knowledge and knowledge systems. And I think that it's why older people, when they're listening to music that doesn't have that aspect, it's a part of what they're pushing back on. And they're saying, well, Real hip hop is got not got knowledge, in, you know yeah, what I'm right, saying? I got substance, <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, that that era, man. Um, it, it, it's good to come up in that era. I think I was, I was perfect for that time. I don't know if um, you know, if if I made the time or the time made me. Yeah. But <laughs> it, it, it it was perfect, you know what I mean? And um, again, man, you know. Having knowledge yourself um, just gave me uh, a, a lot to work with. It gave me, um, you know, it, it, it gave me uh, something to speak on and, and, and had to do it in the right way. So I, I think it kind of gave me a lot of structure, mm -hmm. not only in my life, but in my music, you know. One related uh question is, so we talk about the golden age of hip hop. Yes. So how, you've been doing things and, and working with a number of people in this generation of hip hop, how do you see it where we are now and how do you think about, you know, just in terms of the creativity and the different ways in which people are imagining the world and talking about it? Right. And is anything that, that that you can say that might be useful to think about in the process, because you've seen, you've, you've been at the head of so much, and you've observed it and thought about it and, right. and all that. And so at this particular point, you know, where are we? Um, I think hip hop, it, it, it grown a lot, and at the same time, it, it, it got young. I like to try to explain. Um, being that hip hop is is growing so fast, it's going to new cities, and these new cities is you know coming up, and 
we getting like a bird's eye view of how they live. Um, and of course, hip hop is is a little younger in certain states. You know what I mean? I always tell people in the Bronx when hip hop first came out, it was hip hop, the hip hip, the hip 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 hop. <laughs> you don't stop. You rock it to the bang bang boogie. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I think that's their version of hip hop, the hip hip, the hip hip. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's um, hopefully, it'll it'll grow as the artists mature. Mm -hmm. um, in the different cities, but I think we just getting a look at different cities and and they're you know having fun with it. Um, it's definitely become a lot more lucrative mm -hmm. um, through the time. Um, I watched it, you know, from kind of like the beginning and then you know my era to you know where it's at now. And it's, it's definitely you know more lucrative. And then more important, the genre is really. Um, it's official now, you know what I mean? Then they used to say it was a fad, it wasn't gonna last, but when you look at, you know, America or you look at the world, you know, we can't do nothing without, or, or say we can't promote nothing without putting hip hop in it. We can't do nothing without hip hop in it. If it's, you know, music, if it's a gesture, if it's a word, you know what I mean? If it's you know, so it's like, you know, whenever I cut the TV on, you know, I feel good that, you know, hip hop's all over it, um, consciously and subconsciously, if you know what I mean, you know. Or, if, you know, for instance, when I seen Kool-Aid bust through the wall with the fat chain on it. <laughs> like, Yo, that's shit, they go to the neighborhood, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, that makes you feel good as, you know, artists coming up that, you know, people used to say, yeah, yeah. No, you know, even my mother and father question, you know, is it, you know, football, rap, football, rap. I used to look at them like, I don't get it, man. Football, rap, and you know, I. But um, I guess they was trying to say, you know, football is almost like a career, you know, it's, it's rap a career. But you know, I I couldn't tell then. Yeah. I thought like, yeah, it's yeah. it's a career. But um, mm -hmm. it's definitely uh, it's here now and and. No matter what you do, it's, it's being uh, observed, it's being uh, enjoyed, it's, and, and it's, it's being um, created every day. So long live hip hop. Love it up. If you, if you can, can you talk a little bit, share a little bit in the, in the book? One of the things that you, I remember that, that really just struck me when we were, were talking that I knew we really had something is when you started talking about creativity and you said, you know, after I made the first record, um, you know, all the, all the things, all the slick slang, sayings that, my, that I learned from my family, I had all that stuff in there. So now I had to take a quantum leap yeah. and, and figure out how I was going to create. And one of the things you said is you started to listen to, you, once you started to look for inspiration, you found all type of things to be inspirational. And, and one of the things that struck me was you said, even a blade of grass, um, a sunny day, standing on a rooftop. You know what I mean? And I was like, up. okay, we, 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 we got something here now. Word up, Word <laughs> up man. Um, you know, you get, well, I, w I was reading a lot and studying things and, you know, observing. You know, I, I used to love, you know, writing with a view. Um, I used to go up on a roof in Manhattan and just, you know, I used to, I used to be able to see Statue of Liberty over here, Brooklyn over here, Queens, Bronx up here, Jersey, you know what I mean? So I used to just sit there, zone out, and, and if, if not right, come up with my ideas and right. then go do my thing. And but, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say, um, <laughs> Just like the scenery, I, I started, you know, paying attention to things that I may have taken, you know, for granted. Um, things that was right in my face that can inspire me as well, you know, sometimes. You know, like how many times can I listen to Marvin Gaye or how many times can I listen to this or watch a certain movie? You know, sometimes things that's right in our face is more inspiring than we know. Um, same time, getting knowledge yourself, learning mathematics, and learning how the world works. Um, you know, 
again, things that we take for granted, you know, the, the, the way grass grows, you know, if we understood that everything has a mathematical code, um, we find more interest in it, you know what I mean? And, you know, things that seem simple is, you know, not as simple. And just to understand that and to be able to, you know, look at things and get a deeper meaning is what I was trying to do at that point. I can drive down the street, uh, you know, New York City, and see people, you know, walking down the street or standing there. And um, immediately, I would try to, you know, imagine what their story is, knowing that we all got a story. And just to, you know, look at people and wonder what their story is. Um, to go down the street and see somebody, um, you know, less fortunate, you know, you, you, you can look at them and, and, and really, you know, imagine a, a, a story, you know what I mean? And just observing and, and kind of just, again, getting a deeper meaning of things, man, and just trying to convey that to the paper in different ways, you know what I mean? And you also talk about, you, you give artists instructions for creating the conditions to, to create, can you can you talk about that a little bit? The ways in, you you talk about you know is it a room you want to be in? Yeah, is, yeah. Do you want the lights on? Right. Do you want candles? <laughs> like, yeah. can you share some of that? I mean, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm kind of um, I like I like I like the setup to be right, and you know I I, I had to realize because sometimes you're like, no, why can't I just grab a notebook and go in there and write? You know what I mean? Like, come on, Ryan, you diva or something, man? Get the notebook. But once you get used to, uh, you know, doing it, writing or whatever it is you do, you kind of develop a, a, a method to it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I would rather be in my studio, you know what I mean? It's, it's set up perfect for, you know, what I do. I can, you know, if I'm making a beat, you know, I got all the lights on, everything is good. When it's time to write, you know, calm everything down, cut certain things off and, you know, I might, you know, light a candle or I might put a video of New York on, you know what I mean? Just cut the sound off and I got visuals of New York or, you know, I might put one of my old favorite movies on and just let that, you know, be my visual for the day. But um, being in an environment that you're comfortable in is important, especially to me. Um, and then at the same token, I might be writing something and it might be a little far-fetched, so I'm sitting there, I'm like, uh, I gotta research this now, so now I gotta go get the Quran, I gotta go get the Bible, I gotta go get the Torah and make sure that I stated, you know, actual facts, so I won't be, you know, had no backlash. So for me, being in my environment was important, um, but more, more important than tangible things is just, again, man, um, being comfortable and once you're in the zone, you know, the room disappears. You know what I mean? So, but, you know, you got to put yourself in that, that comfortable place where you're relaxed enough where you can black everything out and it's just you, the pen, and, you know, any wall, you know, you want can be, you know, a, a backdrop of a city or, you know what I mean, what, whatever you can fathom. But, you know, I, for me, that was important, man. I needed that. Thank you so much. You Thank know, you. so I know that people, you know, want to ask questions, but I think that we probably, because we're going to have to leave the building by nine. Mm. Um, <laughs> okay. That's a lot of time, though. Okay. And, That's still you know, a lot of time, though. We, 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 we are goal. really happy to see you, but we, we, we want you. you to still have your hand left, you know, and um, so, um, yes. So uh, I think what we're going to do is, um, Really, thank you once again, and thank you. and and hopefully have a chance if you have questions or comments to um, 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 ask them. And I know that uh, right. yeah, we're going to take some questions, or no? You, yes. Do you think we have time for? Yeah. Oh, please, just five minutes. Just five minutes. <laughs> just five. Just five. Just five. How about three? Three questions. How about three? <laughs> look, look, we, 
No, there, there. Just, just, just three. Just I'll three. try to answer with, with, with two, three word answers, all right? <laughs> yeah. Just three, just three. Okay, so who's it gonna be? Who wants it? I'll let you, you wanna pick who you want? Oh, I, oh, I think oh, because he 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 was singing every lyric to every okay. song you well, did. Right. Okay. Thank you, my brother. He's like, Thank you. yeah, amazing. Thank you, my brother. Go with the Busta Rhymes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Busta, Busta. Him and Swizzy killed that. They, they, that's just a different energy, man. I, I gotta go with the Busta <laughs> on that joint, man. The Nas joint is crazy, laid back. Yeah, the the Jay Z joint was like, you know, like Frank Sinatra times ten. Mm. You know what I mean? But but that that I'm on my New York crazy. <laughs> Uh, who's next? Can we get a woman, sister, instead of men? Somebody? Yo, chop back no there. Sister. There you go, oh, right. Hi. Um, I, I two and a half questions. One, I listened to your breakfast club. Oh. Oh, I listened oh, right. listen to your breakfast club interview, and they mentioned like any rappers nowadays that you listen to, and I know they suggested some. So I was wondering if you have listened to any like newer artists that you were kind of rocking with, and then also on the side of like. Artists who are growing in the industry and having these like beefs, and how beefs back then are very different to how beefs are handled mm -hmm. and settled now. Do you have any like input on that or thoughts for like those who are trying to navigate that? Well, yeah, um, you know, the, uh, the, the beef in hip hop or, or beef in general, um, I think back, back then we understood that. The beef that we had was because you was a rapper and I was a rapper, and people like you and people like me. I mean, simple as that. And then, you know, all it take is for the two rappers to see each other somewhere and just you know give each other that look. And then all of a sudden, somebody say something you know sneaky on a rhyme. But um, <laughs> I think we understood it was rap then. You know what I mean? Um, don't get me wrong. You know, it, you know it. it, it you might see somebody in the club and let them know, like, dope, be careful, man. But um, we knew it was rap. Um, I think today people get a little personal with the beef. Um, they don't keep it music. I think, you know, being that rap is somewhat, um, you know, back then, I, I guess the best way to explain it is rap imitated life back then. Now life imitate rap. So when you speak in a life so heavy in your rhymes, you know, I'm not telling you that, you know, I could beat you over the head with a rhyme. Now they saying I could beat you over the head with a pipe. So it leads to street beef. So we definitely need to check that. Keep it music. Oh, I, it, 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 no, 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 no,
never really had, you know, the big head, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I think just knowing that, I kind of cherished it because to me it was always, you know, it's always like, you know, I watched some of the, you know, young cats try to come in and, and, and get a rep. And I say to myself, well, I got one of the best reps in the game. I'd rather have that than, you know, what some of these other rappers got. So, you know, some people say, you know, is it pressure? Nah, to me, it was like a boost. So, you know, I, I kind of, you know, and, and, you know, at times it could have been pressure. Just like, you know, I don't believe in writer's block. And I'm sure I had it a million, you know, a million times. <laughs> but I've never had writer's block, bro. But, um, you know, to answer your question, yeah, man, it's like, um, you try to uh, you, you you try to use what you have and, and make good of it. Word up. And we talk about that a lot. Talks yeah. about it a lot in the book. So get the book. Word up. Word up. I want to thank everyone. We're now and thank. Thank you. Thank you.